after he did what he did to me, he said, don't you love me now? And I thought about it, and I can only pity this man because he's sick. Desiree Washington, a former beauty pageant contestant who became widely known for accusing heavyweight boxer Mike Tyson of in 1991. At the time, Washington was an 18-year-old Miss Black America contestant. The incident allegedly occurred in Tyson's hotel room in Indianapolis. Tyson was convicted of in 1992 and sentenced to six years in prison. He served three years before being released on parole. The case drew significant media attention and remains a notable part of Tyson's controversial career. But many have questioned the whereabouts of Desiree Washington. We know where Mike Tyson is and where he is at with his career, but what about Desiree Washington? Desiree Washington, the woman Tyson was guilty of being declined comment today. Her lawyer spoke for her, saying in a statement that for nearly four years she has attempted to pick up the pieces of her life and move on. The trauma of the has had a profound and lasting impact on her life. Desiree Washington's allegations against Mike Tyson, while significantly impacting his life and career in the short term, did not ultimately destroy his career. I would tell him that he's sick, that he hurt me really bad. I would tell him, you need help. You know, I didn't do this to hurt you. I didn't do this to take your career away. I did it because you need help. And if your so-called friends weren't big enough to tell you, at least I was, you hurt me and I was big enough to stand up to you and tell you you need help. You hurt me and I'm trying to help you. And that's all I could tell him. Instead, Tyson's time in prison arguably built greater anticipation for his return to the boxing ring, transforming him into an even more compelling figure in the public eye. Mike Tyson, the future, where is it going? Well, I think Mr. Tyson's going to return to Ohio, begin his boxing career again. I ultimately believe that he'll probably be a world champion. The entire ordeal was steeped in controversy, drawing intense media scrutiny and public debate. He's the champ, number one. Always will be to you? Always will be the champ to me. I just can't wait to see him fight again. I'm one of the few probably that feel he was unjustly accused. In 1991, Mike Tyson was at the peak of his career, an undisputed heavyweight champion with a fearsome reputation. Washington's accusation of rape shocked the world, leading to a highly publicized trial. The media coverage was relentless, often focusing on the sensational aspects of the case, rather than the serious nature of the charges. This trial became a spectacle, with the public divided between those who believed Tyson was a predator and those who viewed him as a victim of false allegations. Well, you know, I think the conviction is unfair. Uh, I, I believe uh, Mike Tyson is innocent. I think he's apologized for his behavior, but I think anybody understands that young men at age 23 all across this country are kind of promiscuous. And I think that that's what that situation was like. It was unfortunate that it happened during Indiana Black Expo, which is the largest African-American event. But, you know, I think that now they look back, sometimes it's destiny. And I think out of this grows something good. And I think we're going to see something good in Mike Tyson. Tyson's defense argued that the encounter was consensual, painting Washington as an opportunist. This narrative was bolstered by Tyson's fame and the public's fascination with his persona. On the other hand, Washington's testimony was consistent and detailed, portraying a different, more harrowing version of events. Despite the contentious atmosphere, the jury found Tyson guilty, leading to a six-year prison sentence, of which he served three years. Tyson's imprisonment did have immediate negative consequences for him. His boxing career was interrupted, his public image was tarnished, and he faced the personal indignities of life behind bars. Yet, paradoxically, this period away from the ring built a narrative of redemption and comeback that resonated deeply with fans and the media. Tyson's incarceration became a chapter in a larger story of a fallen champion seeking redemption, adding to his mystique. During his time in prison, Tyson's absence from the sport created a void. Boxing fans and promoters alike speculated about his return, fueling anticipation. Tyson himself remained a figure of interest, giving interviews and maintaining a presence in the media. His release from prison was seen as the prelude to a dramatic comeback, and this anticipation only grew as his release date approached. When Tyson was finally released in 1995, the boxing world was eager to see if he could reclaim his former glory. His return to the ring was one of the most anticipated events in sports history. 
Tyson's first few fights after his release drew massive audiences and significant pay-per-view buys, as fans were curious to see if the former champion still had his legendary prowess. His return fights were spectacles, drawing in viewers who were both fans and skeptics. Mike Tyson has talked about Desiree Washington in the recent years. Came out for revenge. I thought revenge, every... on, revenge on who? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Who? Me. And I'm, I made this up. I made all that up in my head in prison, feeling sorry for myself. He's against me. He, she's against me. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill that. B I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's what it was. So you, so you were very much so infuriated, and you wanted to make people pay. Yeah, because I don't think I should have been in there. Well, I know, but I want you to know this. I'm not above violating a woman, right? But I didn't violate that woman. That's just keeping it real. She's keeping it real. If she, if she walked up to you and say, my name is Desiree, she don't need to say last name. What would be your response? Nothing. I was, how you doing? I don't even know her no more. I don't even have that connection with her no more. I don't, mm -hmm. and that like it's never happened. How about if she wanted to sit down with you? I'm not interested in doing that. Okay. No, she didn't do, she did the wrong thing. I'm not interested, I'm over that. I'm doing this, that. Mm -hmm. This is so much bigger. So you would just, you would just be a gentleman and say, have a nice day. Couldn't go no further. I don't know if I'm a gentleman like that, but you know, it wouldn't be no static. I think I'm above calling her now. Mike Tyson's stance on the Desiree Washington case has remained a topic of interest and controversy over the years. Despite being convicted and serving time in prison, Tyson has consistently maintained his innocence regarding the allegations made by Washington. His position on this matter is particularly intriguing given his openness about other aspects of his life and career, where he has admitted to various wrongdoings. Tyson has often expressed a sense of forgiveness towards Washington, suggesting that he has moved on from the incident. In interviews, Tyson has conveyed a sense of reconciliation with his past, even as he continues to assert his innocence in the Washington case. He has remarked that if he were to be punished for any of his actions, he would prefer it to be for the things he did commit, rather than for a crime he insists he did not commit. Tyson's reflections on the Washington case and his broader life experiences have also been a topic in his numerous interviews and public statements. He has spoken about the challenges of being a public figure and the intense scrutiny that comes with fame. Tyson has also discussed the difficulties he faced growing up in a tough environment and how these experiences shaped his behavior and decisions. Moreover, Tyson's relationship with the media and the public has evolved significantly. While initially depicted as a pariah in the wake of his conviction, he has since managed to garner sympathy and support through his candid discussions about his struggles with mental health, substance abuse, and his efforts to turn his life around. This transformation has been pivotal in shifting public perception and allowing Tyson to move beyond the shadow of his past controversies. But does that mean Desiree moved past the shadows of her past controversies as well? Her story is very complicated. The next clip shown will be one of the very last clips ever spoken about Desiree Washington on any public news or TV source. Desiree Washington, the woman Tyson was guilty of raping, declined comment today. Her lawyer spoke for her, saying in a statement that for nearly four years she has attempted to pick up the pieces of her life and move on. The trauma of the rape has had a profound and lasting impact on her life. End quote. They continue to pursue a civil suit against Tyson. Desiree Washington grew up in Coventry, Rhode Island, in a supportive middle-class family that prioritized both education and personal growth. From a young age, she stood out academically, showing exceptional dedication and intelligence that made her a standout among her peers. Washington was also very active outside of academics, participating in various extracurricular activities like sports, debate club, and community service, demonstrating her wide range of interests and talents. In 1991, her ambition led her to compete in the Miss Black America pageant, a prestigious event that was more than just a beauty contest. It celebrated the cultural contributions and talents of African-American women nationwide. It was during a rehearsal for this event that she unexpectedly met Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson asked Desiree Washington out on a date, and she gave him her hotel phone number thinking, I never thought he would call. Around 1.45 a.m. on July 19, 1991, Tyson called and convinced her to meet him that night. In court, Desiree testified that Tyson said he just wanted to talk and maybe go to some parties, so she even brought a camera to take photos. 
She was driven to the Canterbury Hotel in a rented limousine, where Tyson said he needed to stop at his room to pick up his bodyguard. They walked to room 606, neither holding hands nor touching. Upon entering the room, Desiree testified that Tyson went straight to the bedroom while she waited in the foyer. After some prodding, she joined him in the bedroom, sitting on the foot of the bed as they watched TV for about 15 minutes. Suddenly, Tyson's demeanor changed and he said, You really turn me on. Desiree excused herself to go to the bathroom, saying, When I come back, I want to see Indianapolis. When she returned, Tyson was standing in his underwear. He pulled her close, and when she said, It's time for me to leave, Tyson repeatedly told her, Don't fight me, as he forcibly removed her clothes and threw her onto the bed, pinning her down with his elbow and forearm. Despite her efforts to fight back, she described hitting him as like hitting a brick wall. She shouted, get off me, but Tyson responded, don't fight me, just relax, to which she continued to resist, shouting, no, stop. About 24 hours after the alleged incident, on July 20th, 1991, at 1.20 a.m., Desiree called 911. What are your plans now? To finish college and um, hopefully get myself back again and, and be strong enough to go into law and politics after. Washington chose to withdraw from the spotlight entirely. Despite the intense media scrutiny and public interest in the case, she refused to give any further interviews or statements regarding the incident. Her decision to remain silent added an air of mystery to her story, making her one of the more elusive figures connected to the Tyson saga. Washington's disappearance from the public sphere was a conscious choice to distance herself from the notoriety that came with the case. The media frenzy had taken a significant toll on her, and stepping away from the limelight was likely a means of preserving her privacy and mental well-being. For decades, there was no substantial information about her whereabouts or what path her life had taken post-trial. This absence only fueled speculation and curiosity among those who remembered the case. For years, the only remnants of Washington's life were the archival footage and court records from the trial. She did not capitalize on her fame, nor did she engage with the media to keep her story alive in the public consciousness. This stark retreat is in sharp contrast to many who find themselves in the center of such high-profile legal battles and choose to remain in the public eye. Washington's silence was a testament to her desire to move past the traumatic events and rebuild her life away from public scrutiny. Even in the YouTube comment section, Desiree is heavily scrutinized. It was a setup. He never did what he was convicted of. Scandalous women. She was evil. The whole world saw that girl was lying, except that corrupt judge. We all knew she was lying. That woman set him up. She knew what she was doing. Evil woman. It would make sense for Desiree Washington to remain hidden in today's world, considering she is still a topic of immense controversy. Desiree would be in her 50s, and it was reported that back in 1995, that Desiree moved back to Rhode Island to live with her mother and was set to graduate with a degree in psychology. And from then on, she would remain quiet. But however recently, there have been murmurs of Desiree Washington resurfacing. While concrete details remain scarce, this newfound interest has sparked a renewed conversation about her life and the impact of her decision to accuse Tyson. A mug shot surfaced of a woman named Desiree Washington, leading to speculation that it might be the same Desiree Washington who accused Mike Tyson of rape in 1991. The photograph, which depicted a middle-aged woman, quickly circulated online, sparking debates and curiosity among those familiar with the high-profile case from the early 90s. However, concrete confirmation of her identity remains elusive and the public is left to wonder if this woman is indeed the same person who once stood at the center of one of the most sensational trials of the decade. The woman in the mugshot was reportedly convicted of selling crack cocaine near an elementary school in Rhode Island. This charge brought significant media attention, primarily due to the possibility that she might be the same Desiree Washington who had disappeared from the public eye decades earlier. The conviction for such a serious offence added a new layer of tragedy and complexity to the story, suggesting a drastic shift in the circumstances of her life. Despite the interest and speculation, there has been a notable lack of definitive information confirming whether this woman is the same Desiree Washington involved in the Tyson case. Officials have not released detailed personal information that could clarify the connection, and those close to the original Desiree Washington have either remained silent or are unreachable. This ambiguity leaves room for much conjecture, 
but little in the way of verified facts. The news of the drug conviction paints a starkly different picture from the young beauty queen who once captivated the nation with her poise and determination. If this is indeed the same person, it raises poignant questions about the long-term impacts of her experiences and the challenges she may have faced in the years following the trial. The trajectory from a promising young woman involved in a high-profile legal battle to someone entangled in the criminal justice system for drug offences suggests a life marked by hardship and turmoil. This potential development in Desiree Washington's story highlights broader issues about how public figures from sensational cases cope with the aftermath of their exposure. The intense media scrutiny and public judgment can have lasting effects, often leading individuals down paths they might otherwise have avoided. If the woman in the mugshot is indeed the same Desiree Washington, her story serves as a stark reminder of the personal cost of public infamy and the ways in which early traumatic experiences can influence the course of a person's life. In the absence of definitive confirmation, the identity of the woman in the mugshot remains a matter of speculation. However, the story has reignited interest in Desiree Washington's life, prompting renewed discussions about her fate and the long shadow cast by her accusations against Mike Tyson. Whether or not this woman is the same Desiree Washington, the very possibility serves to underscore the complex and often painful aftermath of being thrust into the public eye under such dramatic circumstances. What do you think? Is this really Desiree Washington? The nose and everything seems to look like her, but she looks a great deal older than a 50-year-old Desiree Washington. Comment below and let us know your thoughts, and also like and subscribe for more videos like this.